Hello, friends. It's late on a Wednesday evening. I thought I'd make a quick recording for you. Give you something to listen to. Maybe help you get to sleep. I hope that you've had a good day. One never knows how one day will go. Mine was interesting. But this is not about me. This is about you. And I want you to be able to relax. Lie down. Take it easy. Maybe get some good sleep this evening. Because tomorrow is another day. And tomorrow we have to go out and take on that world, don't we? I know I certainly plan on doing that. I have some studying I have to do for some exams I'm taking. And I'm not stressed about it at all. Of course, maybe the whiskey has something to do with that. I'm kidding. It's iced tea. It's not. No, it's not. It's whiskey. So, someone asked me if I would do some whisper. Whisper therapy, they call it. I'm uh, not sure how to do that. had to clear my throat. So yeah, I I don't often get to use my natural voice uh, outside of uh, my recording setup, simply due to the fact that when I'm in public, if we're in a pub or a restaurant or just out on the street having a conversation, I usually have to raise my voice up uh, quite a bit so that you can actually hear what I'm saying. You see, because this voice is, um, well, it, because it's very low, it's, this is just my natural speaking voice. And, you know, when it's this low, it's kind of hard to hear. It's, it's not quite a whisper, but it's not super loud. Now, I do have the capability to raise my voice to speak above a crowd, as I've demonstrated in the past when I've been asked to uh, be the master of ceremonies for weddings, um, different organized events, and working as a DJ for weddings. I'm usually the master of ceremonies, as it turns out. Um, so, yeah, I'm able to raise my voice and change the timbre and change the pitch. But this, what I'm doing here, this is all about trying to give you some relaxing auditory stimulation where I give you my best Bob Ross. Do you remember Bob Ross? Bob Ross, the artist from PBS. He passed away a number of years ago. He had a giant fro. I did once too, and if you check my mix cloud out, you'll discover a photograph of me from 1984 when I had a giant fro. That mix cloud shows about uh, 20 songs from the uh, 70s. It was actually 21. I added one more at the end because I felt compelled to listen to more Led Zeppelin. Sometimes... Sometimes Led Zeppelin is what you need. I know oftentimes Led Zeppelin's what I need. I find both um, the sound of Jimmy Page's playing and 
the wail of Robert Plant's voice can really lull one into a sense of deep relaxation. Now, of course, I'm not speaking about their hard rocking tunes. I'm talking about their mellower stuff, some of their quieter pieces, mostly acoustic. Going to California, for one. Babe, I'm going to leave you. Tangerine. Just to name a couple of songs. I've been listening to a lot of them lately. I just, I think because I need to um, rediscover a part of myself that I've let go dormant for a while. That's up to me. Or just for me. I'm not necessarily going to reveal everything to you. Although, if you listen to the podcast, you'll you'll discover that I often do uh, tell you about aspects of my personality in my life. Um, the reason I do that is, I mean, the, the, the podcast is called Songs and Stories. And oftentimes those stories are anecdotes from my personal life. Moments where I've had the opportunity to see a... Um, Artists perform live in concert. Some of those artists I've had the pleasure of meeting. And as I play their songs, I'll tell you those stories too. I'm working currently on part two of the uh, rock, hard rock songs of the 70s. Or 70s rock, I guess. Um, I hope to produce that this weekend. Um, possibly Saturday if I can complete the playlist. This uh, this playlist will be largely Canadian because I was uh, mostly absent for Canadians on the first 20 songs, 21 songs, only one Canadian artist, and uh, I need to change that up for the second, second show for 70s Rock because it's all about, well, I've always been all about promoting Canadian artists. I mean, we live next door to the United States of America. They're about nine times our population or something. No, maybe eight, eight and a half times our population. So, you know, they they get uh, so much of the spotlight. So I always thought it was important to promote Canadian artists. And if you've not been aware, Canadian artists have really been occupying the charts for the last 10 years. Five Canadian artists have occupied the Billboard Top Ten. It's the truth. You can check into it. I've talked about it on my podcast. And I guess I'm really promoting that today, but I just want you to sit back, relax, take it easy. Because life is very complicated these days. I mean, so many of us are stuck in our homes um, throughout the province of Ontario. We we have a current stay-at-home order lockdown effect. Same thing in Quebec, which has an 8 p.m. to 5 a.m. curfew, which makes things incredibly challenging. I'm, when I'm not at work, I'm at home studying and taking courses, which is difficult because if I if I admit the truth, and the truth is that I will admit, I have a difficult time studying at home. I prefer to do uh, training in the office. There's n- there's no distractions in the office. There's too many distractions here. You're home alone, and you're taking a course, and you suddenly have a pounding headache. You're like, I'll just stop that for a bit, and I'll go lie down for a little while, and put a cold cloth on my head have an aspirin, and hopefully feel better. Which, admittedly, is nice to be able to do, but your work kind of gets pushed to the wayside because when you're at the office and that that needs to be done, you power through. Which is complicated because taking care of one's health is better So when I'm at home, I take care of myself. But I don't get as much done. I don't get as much accomplished. 
You see the conundrum there? Okay. Enough about me. Maybe tomorrow we'll paint a picture. No, we're not going to paint a picture. Maybe I'll show you some artwork, though. Until such time, I will say, please, take a deep breath. that process ten times. In through the mouth, out through the nose. It will calm your soul and your spirit because it releases GABA into the brain. You'll feel much better. Take my word for it. I know. I have extensively researched it. No, I didn't watch a video on YouTube. I actually spoke to my doctor and then took a six-week course about it. Yeah, I did. I've learned a couple of things. and One thing I've learned that I think is the most important lesson I could ever teach anybody is the older you get, the more experience you have, the more wisdom you gain, the more knowledge you accrue. And you come to the realization that you don't know a damn thing about anything. There's so much to know and so much to learn, and you will spend your entire lifetime doing it, and you'll never know nearly enough. I'll give you one piece of advice. If you find yourself in a position where you're concerned, or you're having this thought, this feeling, this anx anxious voice in your head telling you that, Oh my God, what are they going to do when they find out I don't know what I'm doing? Nobody knows what they're doing. Nobody. We just act like it. It's called fake it till you make it for a reason. No one knows what they're doing. You'll be okay. Take a deep breath. And let it out. Now, go to sleep.